Welcome to another PC parts list of the month. This month, we're going to be looking at two potential PC builds. The only differences are going to be the motherboard and the processor. Now, the only choice you've got to make is an i7 or a Ryzen 7. Now, the two CPUs we've chosen are the i7 7700K and the Ryzen 7 1700. They are far and away the two closest CPUs in terms of price and performance from these two ranges. Now for each build, we're gonna have a budget of $1,500. And either way, this PC is gonna be great for either gaming or content creation, and even down to an entry-level VR system. So let's see, what can we get for our money? Well, starting with the Intel parts, as I've already said, the CPU is the i7-7700K. Now it retails at about $350. It's a quad core, eight thread, and it runs up to 4.5 gigahertz. Although with it being a K CPU, that means we can overclock it. Some people have been able to reach up to five gigahertz with this. In order to overclock it though, we're gonna need a motherboard that's capable. So here, I've gone for a Z270 Maximus 9 Hero from Asus. This is a hugely popular motherboard from their Republic of Gamers range, and it can be found for about $230. Meanwhile, on the AMD side of things, we have the brand new Ryzen 7 1700. Now this goes for about $330 at the moment, and while it does run at a lower clock speed than the i7, it more than makes up for this with the new Zen architecture and the fact it has double the cores and threads. Eight cores, 16 threads. Now it does lag very slightly behind the i7 for gaming performance, but if you do anything that will use the extra threads, video editing or live streaming for example, then the Ryzen 7 overtakes it. Now in the future, this is only going to get better with more games taking advantage of those extra cores and extra threads. And complementing this is a very similar motherboard to the i7 choice. Here we're going for the Crosshair 6 Hero from Asus, which again is from their Republic of Gamers range. Now this can be found for about $250. Now this board's got a lot of great features, but one thing that it's got that a lot of other AM4 boards haven't got are AM3 mounting points for coolers. Now this means we can use any existing water cooler, air cooler, without the need to order specific brackets or an adapter to get it to fit to the motherboard. So this leads us nicely on to the first of the parts which is gonna be common to both builds, the CPU cooler. Here, I've gone for the Corsair H100i V2. It's an all-in-one liquid cooler and will allow us to get a really good overclock from either build. Now with the Ryzen system, we could always use the supply cooler, which is an air cooler, the Wraith Spire, and save ourselves $100. But having used the H100i in my own system, I can tell you it's dead quiet and keeps my 6700K really cool. Now for the memory, I've chosen 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4. Again, I use this memory in my own system and it runs at a blister in 3000 megahertz, no problem. Now RAM prices are very volatile at the moment. At the time of filming, I found this for $120. For the storage, I'm going to go for two drives. For the boot drive, we're going with an ADATA 480GB solid state drive. Now this is going to house Windows and all the system files and any important programs that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now you'll really notice the difference of a solid state drive in boot times and responsiveness if you've only ever used a hard drive before. Now, second drive on this is going to be for data and it's going to be a one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive. Now I use this a lot in a lot of builds that I do, uh, especially the budget builds, and it's a really good drive for everyday use. And put those two together, you'll have a great combination for a total of $180. Next, let's look at the GPU. Here we've gone for a GTX 1070. Now the Gigabyte Winforce OC, it was the cheapest 1070 I could find at $365. This is an absolute bargain for a pre-overclock card. Now for the power supply, I've gone for a 750 watt Corsair semi-modular supply, the CX750M. 
Now I use the 650 watt version of this in mine, so I have no problems at all in using it. It's a, an 80 plus bronze, and you should be able to get this for about $80. Now finally, let's look at the case. With so many to choose from, this will be down to personal preference. In a build like this, when you're spending so much money, you do need a quality case. So I've gone with the old reliable, the NZXT S340. This is a top quality case, and at the moment, you can find these for as little as $67. Now, if you can afford it, you could go for the Elite version instead with its tempered glass side panels. It looks amazing. So there we go. Two great build options, depending on your personal preference. Intel or AMD, KB Lake or Ryzen, I'll leave that with you. Let me know which one you'd go for in the comments below. Don't forget to click that like button if you like the video and check out some of my other videos which are on the screen right now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more great content coming soon, so stay tuned. So all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching and I will see you later.